despise me if I do not hold him in my hate. In personal suite to make me his lieutenant, off cap to him, and by faith of the man, I know my price. I am worth no worse a place, but he, as loving his own pride and purposes, evades them with a bombast circumstance, horribly stuffed with the epithets of war, and in conclusion, non sweets my mediators, for certs, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? Forsooth, a great arithmetician? One Michael Cassio? A Florentine, a fellow almost damned in a fair wife that never set a squadron in the field. And I, God bless the mark, his moorship's ancient. I will move against the moor in good time, for I do know the state cannot with safety cast him for he's embarked with such loud reason to the Cyprus Wars. Another of his fathom, they have none to lead their business in which regard, though I do hate him as I do hell pains. Yet, for necessity of present life, I must show out a flag and sign of love. The Duke's letters say 200 galleys, yet do they all confirm a Turkish fleet and bearing up to Cyprus? It is a business of some heat. Mm. True, the Turk with the most mighty preparation makes for Cyprus. The Duke calls upon you, my general, as the fortitude of the place is best known to you. I do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites most humbly. I crave fit disposition for my wife due reference of place and exhibition with such accommodations and besort as levels with her breeding. Here, my husband, that I did love to live with you, I have listened, heard of the battles, sieges, fortunes that you have passed, and with a greedy ear devoured your discourse, loved you for the dangers. Thus I would not hear here reside if i be left behind a moth of peace and you go to the war i shall go with you my life upon her faith <sighs> honest iago my desdemona must i leave to thee i prithee let thy wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage <sighs> come desdemona I have but an hour of love, of worldly matters and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love to the moor, nor he to her. These moors are changeable in their wills. She must change for the youth. When she is sated with his body, she will find the error of her choice. I hate the more. He holds me well. The better shall my purpose work on him. Cassio's a proper man. Let me see now. Let's see after some time. To abuse Othello's ear, that he is too familiar with his wife. He hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected, framed to make women false. The more thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. Methinks the wind hath spoke aloud at land, a fuller blast ne'er shook our battle. If it hath ruffian so upon the sea, if that Turkish fleet be not in sheltered and embayed, they are drowned. It is impossible they bear it out. Our wars are done. Oh, behold, the riches of the land, the riches of the ship has come on shore. Hail to thee, lady, and the grace of heaven, before, behind thee, and on every hand, and wheel thee around. <laughs> I thank you, valiant Cassio. 
What tidings can you tell me of my lord? He is not yet arrived, nor know I aught, but that he's well and will be shortly here. Oh, but I fear, how lost you company? Great contention of the sea and skies parted our fellowship. Good ancient, you are welcome, I say you. Our journey is well completed. We stand to greet the arrival of our succeeding general. He takes her by the palm, a well said whisper with as little a web as this, I will ensnare as great a fly as Cassio, a smile upon her do. I will give thee in thy own courtship, very good, well kissed, an excellent courtesy, tis so indeed. Oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. <laughs> It gives me wonder great as my content to see you here before me. Oh, my soul's joy. If after every tempest comes such calms, may the winds blow till they have wakened death. <laughs> my soul hath her content so absolute that not another comfort like to this succeeds in unknown fate. <laughs> the heavens forbid. But that our loves and comforts should increase, even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. <laughs> and this and this, the greatest discords be that e'er our hearts shall make. Oh, you are well tuned now, but I'll set down the pegs that make this music as honest as I am. Come, let us to the castle. News, friends, our wars are done. The Turks are drowned. Honey, you shall be well desired in Cyprus. I have found great love amongst them. Oh, my son. Sweet, I, I prattle out of fashion, and I dote in mine own comfort. I prithee, good Iago, go to the bay and disembark my coffers. Come, Desdemona, once more, well met at Cyprus. The lieutenant tonight watches on the court of guard we shall find some occasion to anger Cassio. He is rash and very sudden and colder and happily may strike at us. Out of that, I will cause thee to mutiny. I put the more at least into a jealousy so strong that judgment cannot cure. I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip. Abuse him to the moor in rank garb. Make the moor thank me, love me, and reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet even to madness. Tis here, but yet confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen tin used. Iago hath direction what to do, but notwithstanding with my personal eye, will I look to it. Welcome, Iago. We must to the watch. Not this hour, Lieutenant. Tis not yet ten o' the clock. Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine. Mm, not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and uh, unhappy brains for drinking. I could well wish courtesy would invent some other form of entertainment. Oh, they are our friends, but one cup. I'll drink for you. <laughs> I have drunk but one cup tonight, and that was craftily qualified, too. <laughs> and behold, what innovation it makes here. I am um, unfortunate in the infirmity, and dare not test my weakness with any more. If I can fasten but one cup upon him, with that which he hath drunk tonight already, he'll be full of quarrel and offense as my young mistress dog. 
Now amongst this flock of drunkards lurks a friend who is to put our Cassio in some action that may offend the isle. Some wine, ho! Well, wine, I shall drink, <laughs> to the health of our general. For mine own part, and no offense to the general, nor any man of quality, I hope to be saved. And so do I too, Lieutenant. I but by your leave, not before me. <laughs> the Lieutenant is to be saved before the ancient. Let's have no more of this. Let's do our affairs. Forgive us our sins. Do not think that I am drunk. This is my ancient, this is my right hand, and this is my left. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough and speak well enough. Now my fellow will strike and cause Cassio to rebel. Tis to his virtue a just equinox. I fear the trust the fellow puts in him, on some odd time in his infirmity, will shake this island. Ho! 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 Rascal! Came me this way. What's the matter, Lieutenant? A knave did attempt to strike me and teach me my duty. Beat the knave with a twig and bottle! Nay, good Lieutenant, I saw him not. I pray you, sir, hold your hand. Let me go, sir, or I'll knock you over the mazard. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk? <laughs> I have been attacked by a scoundrel. He ran this way. Good will, Lieutenant, hold. You will be shamed forever. What is the matter here? Hold for your lives. Hold, ho, Lieutenant. Have you forgot all sense of place and duty? Hold, the General speaks to you. Hold, hold for shame. Why, how now, ho? From whence ariseth this? For Christian shame, put by this barbarous brawl. Honest Iago, that lookest dead with grieving, speak who began this. On thy love I charge thee. I do not know. Friends, all but now, even now, sword out and raging at a phantom, I met him here. How comes it, Michael, you are thus forgot? I pray you pardon me. I cannot speak. Now by heaven, my blood begins my safer guides to rule. If I once stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Give me to know how this foul rout began, who set it on, and he that is approved in this offense, though he had twinned with me both at birth, shall lose me. Tis monstrous. Iago, who began it? I had rather have my tongue cut from my mouth than it should do to offend Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth. There comes a crying out for help, and Cassio thus appeared with determined sword, seeming ready to thirst. I stepped in to Cassio, and to entreat his pause, and Cassio, high in oath, which till tonight, I ne'er might say before, when you yourself did part. More of this matter cannot I report, as men in rage strike those that wish them best. Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received from one I did not see some strange indignity with patience could not pass. I know, Iago, thy honesty and love doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Reputation. Reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I've lost a part of myself, and what remains is bestial. As I am an honest man, I thought you would receive some bodily wound. There is more sense in that than in reputation. Reputation is an idle and most false imposition. You have lost no reputation at all. What man? There are ways to recover the general again. You are now but a cast in his mood a punishment more in 
policy than in malice. Sue to him again, and he's yours. I will rather sue to be despised than to deceive so good a commander with so slight, so drunken and so indiscreet an officer. I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. A, a, a quarrel, but nothing wherefore. Oh, that men should put an enemy in their mouths to steal away their brains. That we should with joy, pleasance, revel, and applause transform ourselves into beasts. Why? But you are well now well enough. How came you thus recovered? <laughs> and hath pleased the devil drunkenness to give place to the devil wrath. One unperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed in a disposition that this broken joint between you and her husband entreat her to splinter. Think it freely. And betimes in the morning, I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I am desperate in my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night, honest Iago. And what's he then that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give an honest to counsel Cassio to this parallel course, directly to his good divinity of hell. When devils will be the blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whiles this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she pleads for him strongly to the more. I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust, and by how much she strives to do him good. <laughs> She shall undo her credit with the more. Good morrow, good lieutenant. I am sorry for your displeasure, but all will sure be well. The general and his wife are talking of it, and she speaks for you stoutly. The more replies that in wholesome wisdom he might not but refuse you, but he protests he loves you and needs no other suitor but his likings to take the safest occasion by the front to bring you in again. Yet I beseech you, if you think fitter that it may be done, give me advantage of some brief discourse with Desdemona alone. Pray you come in. I will bestow you where you shall have time to speak your bosom freely. Be thou assured, good Cassio, I will do all my abilities in thy behalf, but I will have my lord and you again as friendly as you were. Oh, bounteous madam, whatever shall become of Michael Cassio, he's never anything but your true servant. Do not doubt that. Before Amelia here, I give thee warrant of thy place. Assure thee, if I do vow a friendship, I'll perform it to the last article, my lord shall never rest. I'll intermingle everything he does with Cassio's suit. Therefore, be merry, Cassio. Madam, here comes my lord. Ah, uh, madam, I'll take my leave. Why, stay and hear me speak. Uh, madam, not now. I'm very ill at ease, unfit for my own purposes. Well, do your discretion. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure, I cannot think it. That he would steal away so guilty-like seeing you coming? How now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Well, who is't you mean? Why, your lieutenant, Cassio. Good, my lord. If I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. For if he be not one that truly loves you, that errs in ignorance and not in cunning, a sooth, 
so humbled that he hath left part of his grief with me to suffer with him. Good love, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. I pray thee, name the time. In faith, he's penitent. And yet his trespass in our common reason. When shall he come? Tell me, Othello. I wonder in my soul what you would ask me that I should deny or stand so mammering on. But Michael Cassio, that came a wooing with you, and so many a time when I have spoke of you dispraisingly, hath ta'en your part to have so much to do to bring him in. Trust me, I could do much. Prithee, no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Emilia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, I am obedient. Hmm. Excellent wretch. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee. And when I love thee not, Chaos comes again. Did Michael cast you when you wooed my lady know of your love? He did. From first to last, why dost thou ask? But for satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why of thy thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes, and went between us very oft. Why then, I think Cassio is an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I prithee, speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Could my lord pardon me, utter my thoughts, why, say they are vile and false, as where that palace where into foul things sometimes intrude not, who has a beast so pure, but some uncleanly apprehensions keep leets and law days and in session sit with meditations lawful? Thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago, if thou but thinkest him wronged and makest his ear stranger to thy thoughts. Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing, t'was mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that flitches from me, my good name, robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thoughts. Oh, beware, my lord of jealousy. It is a green-eyed monster which doth mocks the meat it feeds on. That cockhold lives in bliss, who, certain of his faith, loves not his wronger. But oh, what damned minutes tells he who dots, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Good heaven, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why? <laughs> Why is this? Thinkest thou I'd make a lie of jealousy to follow still the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions? <laughs> Tis not to make me jealous, to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well. Where virtue is, these are more virtuous. <laughs> Nor from mine own weak merits will I draw the smallest fear or doubt of her revolt, for she had eyes and chose me. No, Iago. I'll see before I doubt, when I doubt, prove, and on the proof, there's no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. Look to your wife, observe her well with Cassio. Where are your eye thus? Not jealous, nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature, out of self-bounty, be abused. Look to it in Venice, they do not let heaven see the pranks. They dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not left undone, but kept unknown. Dost thou say so? She did deceive her father marrying you. 
and when she seemed to shake and fear your looks, she loved them most. I do not think but Desdemona's honest. <laughs> My lord, I would I might entreat your honor to scan things no further. Leave it to time. Though it be fit that Cassio have his place, for sure he fills it up with great ability. Yet, if you please to hold him off a while, you shall perceive him and his means. Note that if your lady strains his entertainment with any strong or vehement importunity, much will be seen in that. This fellow's of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Yet that's not much. She's gone. I am abused and my relief must be to loathe her. Oh, curse of marriage, that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I had rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Yet, tis the plague of great ones, Prerogative are they less than the base? Tis destiny unshunnable like death. Even then, this forked plague is fated for us when we do quicken. Desdemona quick comes. If she be false, oh, then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. Oh no, my dear Othello. Your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard. Within this hour, it will be well. Your napkin is too little. Let it alone. Come, I'll go in with you. I am very sorry that you are not well. I'm glad I have found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token, for he conjured her she should ever keep it that she reserves it ever more about her to kiss and talk to. I'll have the work tan out and give it to Iago. What he will do with it, heaven knows not I. I nothing but to please his fantasy. How now? What do you hear alone? What will you give me now for the same handkerchief the more first gave to Desdemona? She let it drop by negligence into the advantage. I, being here, took it up. Look, here it is. A good wench. Give it to me. What will you do with it? You have been, that you have been so earnest to have me filch it. If it be not for some purpose of import, give it me again. Poor lady, she'll run mad when she shall lack it. <laughs> I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something, the more already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are, in their nature, poisons, which at first are scarce found to distaste, but a, with a little act upon the blood burn like the mines of sulfur 
I did say so. Look where he comes. How now, my lord? What sense had I of her stolen hours of lust? I saw it not, thought it not, it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is stolen, let him not know it, and he's not robbed at all. I am sorry to hear this. Oh, now forever, farewell, the, the tranquil mind, farewell, content, farewell, Othello's occupation gone. Is it possible, my lord? Villain! Be sure thou prove my love a whore. Be sure of it! Give me the ocular proof! If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse, or by the worth of man's eternal soul, thou hadst been better have been born a dog than answer my wicked wrath. Give me a living reason she's disloyal. I do not like the office, but Sith, I'm entered in this cause so far, pricked to it by foolish honesty and love. I will go on. I lay with Cassio lately, and being troubled with a raging tooth, I could not sleep. There are a kind of men so loose of soul that in their sleep will mutter their affairs. One of this kind is Cassio. In sleep I heard him say, Sweet Desdemona, let us be wary, let us hide our loves. And then, sir, he would gripe and wring my hand, cry, oh, sweet creature, and then cried, curse fate that give thee to the more. Oh, monstrous, monstrous. Nay, this was but his dream. But this denoted a foregone conclusion. Tis a shrewd doubt, though it be but a dream. I'll tear her all to pieces! Nay, but be wise. Yet we see nothing done. She may be honest yet. Tell me but this. Have you not seen sometimes a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. Twas my first gift. I know not that, but such a handkerchief. I am sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? It speaks against her and with others' proofs. Oh, that the slave had 40,000 lives. One is too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see tis true. Look here, Iago. All my fond love, thus do I blow to heaven. Tis gone! Patience, I say. Your mind perhaps may change. Never, Iago! Even so, my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love, till that a capable and wide revenge swallow them up. Witness you ever burning lights above. You element that clip us round about. Witness here, Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong the fellow's service. I greet thy love, not with vain thanks, but with acceptance bounteous, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Within these three days, let me hear thee say that Cassio's not a lie. My friend is dead. Tis done at your request. But let her live. Damn her! Loot minx! Oh, damn her. Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. Now art thou my lieutenant.
I am your own forever. Where should I lose that handkerchief, Amelia? I, I know not, madam. Believe me, I had rather I had lost my purse full of crusados, but that my noble moor is true of mind and made of no such baseness as jealous creatures are, or enough to start him thinking. Is he not jealous? <laughs> Who, he? I think the son where he was born drew all such humors from him. A look where he comes. I will not leave him now till Cassio be called to him. How is it with you, my lord? Well, my good lady. Oh, hardness to dissemble. How do you, Desdemona? Well, my good lord. Give me your hand. This hand is moist, my lady. You may indeed say so, for twas that hand that gave away my heart. A liberal hand. The hearts of old gave hands. But our new heraldry is hands, not hearts. Lend me thy handkerchief. Here, my lord. That which I gave you. I have it not about me. That is a fault. That handkerchief did an Egyptian to my mother give. She was a charmer and could almost read the thoughts of people. She told her while she kept it, twould make her amiable and subdue my father entirely to her love. She, dying, gave it me and bid me, when my fate would have me wise, to give it her. I did so. And take heed on it. Make it a darling like your precious eyes. To lose it or give it away were such perdition as nothing else could match. Why do you speak so startlingly and rash? Fetch it. Let me see it. Why, right, so I can, sir, but I will not now. This is a trick to put me from my suit. Pray you, let Cassio be received again. Fetch me the handkerchief. My mind misgives. A man that all his time had founded his good fortunes on your love shared dangers with you. The handkerchief! In sooth, you are to blame. Away! Not this man jealous? I never saw this before. Sure, there's some wonder in the handkerchief. I am most unhappy in the loss of it. Yet that seems no, no reason to rouse his ire. Pray heaven it be state matters, as you think, and no conception nor no jealous toy concerning you. That's the day. I never gave him cause. But jealous souls will not be answered so. They are not ever jealous for the cause, but jealous for they are jealous. Tis a monster begot upon itself on itself. Heaven keep that monster from Othello's mind. Will you think so? Think so, Iago. What? To kiss in private? An unauthorized kiss. Or to be naked with her friend in bed, an hour or more not meaning any harm. Naked in bed, Iago, and not mean harm? It is hypocrisy against the devil. They that mean virtuously and yet do so, 
The devil their virtue tempts, and they tempt heaven. So they do nothing, tis a venial slip. But if I give my wife a handkerchief... What then? Why then, tis hers, my lord, and being hers, she may, I think, bestow it on any man. She is protectress of her honor, too. May she give that? Her honor is an essence that's not seen. They have it very oft that have it not, but for the handkerchief. By heaven, I would most gladly have forgot it. Thou saidst it comes o'er my memory, as doth the raven o'er the infected house, boding to all. He had my handkerchief. Hath he said anything? He hath, my lord. But you, you be well assured, no more than he'll unswear. What hath he said? Faith, that he did. I know not what he did. What? What? Lie. With her? With her? On her, what you will. Lie with her. Lie on her. We say, lie on her when they belie her. Lie with her. Fulsome handkerchief confessions, handkerchief to confess and be hanged for his labor. First to be hanged and then to confess. I tremble at it. Confess, handkerchief, oh devil. Dost thou mock me? I mock you. No, by heaven, would you bear your fortune like a man? Stand you a while apart. Confine yourself but in a patient list. Cassio, come hither, but do encave yourself, for I will make him tell a new tale. Where, how, how oft, how long ago, and when he hath and is again to cope your wife, I say, but mark his gesture, marry patience. No. Will I question Cassio of Bianca, a creature that dots on Cassio? He, when he hears of her, cannot refrain from the excesses of laughter. Here he comes. As he shall smile, a fellow shall go mad. His bookish jealousy must construe poor Cassio's smile, gestures and light behavior quite in the wrong. How do you know, Lieutenant? The worse, sir, that you give me the addition who's even wants to kill me. Ply does Zimona well, and you aren't sure? Now, if this sweet in lay Bianca's power, how quickly should you speed? Mm, alas, poor caitiff. Look how he laughs already. I never knew woman love man so. She gives it out that you shall marry her, hey. Do you intend it? <laughs> I marry her? What, a customer? Prithee, bear some charity to my wits. Do not think it's so unwholesome. <laughs> so, 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 so they laugh that win. Faith, the cry goes that you shall marry her. Mm, she was here even now. She uh, haunts me in every place. I was the other day on the sea bank with certain uh, Venetians, and thither comes the bauble, and by this hand she falls about my neck. <laughs> Crying, oh dear Cassio, as it were, his gesture imports it. So hangs and lulls and weeps upon me, so hails and pulls me. <laughs> now he tells Oh, she plucked him to my chamber. Oh, I see that nose of yours, but not that dog I shall throw it to. <laughs> Pardon me, to sweet Bianca I gave a napkin, 
I found it in my chamber and I asked her to leave me. I do attend here upon the general and think it no addition, nor my wish to have him see me woman. Then she cried. What did I mean by that same handkerchief? She claimed she was a fine fool to take it. It is some minx's token and she threw it back at me. Why, here it is. <laughs> I'm heaven. That should be my handkerchief. Faith, I must chase after her. She'll rail in the street otherwise. <laughs> How shall I murder him, Iago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? And did you see the handkerchief? Is that mine? Yours by this hand. And to see how he prizes the foolish woman, your wife. She gave it to him, and he hath given it to his whore. I let her rot and perish and be damned tonight. For she shall not live. No, my heart is turned to stone. I strike it, and it hurts my hand. Get me some poison, Iago, this night. I'll not expostulate with her. Let her body and beauty improvide my mind again this night, Iago! Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed, even the bed she hath contaminated. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Excellent, good. I durst, my lord, to wager she is honestly down my soul at stake. If you think other, remove your thought. It doth abuse your bosom. If any wretch have put this in your head, let heaven requite it with the serpent's curse. For if she be not honest, chaste, true, there's no man happy. The purest of their wives is foul as slander. Better come hither. Go! It says enough, yet she's a simple bod that cannot say as much. This is a subtle whore, a closet, lock and key of villainous secrets, and yet she'll kneel and pray. I have seen her do it. My lord, what is your will? Let me see your eyes. Look in my face. Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. I am your true and loyal wife. Come, swear it. Damn thyself, lest being like one of heaven, the devils themselves should fear to seize thee. Therefore be double damned. Swear thou art honest. Heaven doth truly know it. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord? With whom, how am I false? Had it pleased heaven <laughs> to try me with affliction, I should have found in some place of my soul a drop of patience. But alas! To make me a fixed figure for the time of scorn to point his slow, unmoving finger at. Heaven, you do me wrong! I cry you mercy, then! I took you for the cunning whore of Venice that married with Othello. You, mistress, that have the office opposite to Saint Peter and keep the gate of hell! Is meat I should be used so? Very meat. <laughs> How have I been behaved that he might stick the smallest opinion on my least misuse? 
I cannot tell. Those that do teach young babes do it with gentle words and easy tasks. He might have chid me for in good faith, I am a child to chiding. He called you whore. Hath thou forsook so many noble matches, your father and country and friends, to be called whore? Would it not make one weep? The moors abused by some most villainous knave, some base notorious knave, some scurvy fellow. What shall I do to win my lord again? If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse of thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any other sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet and ever did, and I ever will, though he do sh shake me off to beggarly divorcement of him dearly comfort forswear me cassio supped tonight with a hollow tree he knows not yet of his horrible fortune rodrigo will watch his going thence which i will fashion to fall up between twelve and one so that he may take cassio he will go along with me I will show him such a necessity in his death that he shall think of himself bound to it. Straight will Cassio come. Rodrigo stands behind this bulk, wearing his rapier bare, and will put it home. I have rubbed this young quat almost to the sense. And he grows angry. Now, whether he kill Cassio, or Cassio kill him, or each do kill each other, every way makes my gain. But so, I hear him coming. Hey, that thrust has been mine enemy indeed. But that my coat is better than thou know'st, I will make proof of thine, and slay thee, dog. It is the cause. It is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, chase stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet she must die, or else she'll betray more men. Put out the light. Put out the light! Only mm -hmm. breath that dost almost persuade one more, and this the last. So sweet was an air so fatal. I must weep. They are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly. Strike where it doth love. She wakes. Who's there? Othello? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? I, my lord. And yet I fear you. For you are fatal then when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear, I know not, since guiltiness I know not, but yet I feel I fear. Think on thy sins. 
that handkerchief, which I so loved, and gave thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No. By my life and soul, uh, uh, send for the man and ask him. By heaven. I saw my handkerchief in the hand, oh perjured woman! Thou just stole my heart and makest me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. I never gave it him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. He had confessed! But he hath used thee. He will not say so. No. His mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath tained order for it. Oh, my fear interprets. What, is he dead? Had I, all his hairs, been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all! Oh, banish me, my lord, but kill me not! It is too late. Oh, good my lord, I would speak a word with you. Yes. Tis Amelia. By and by. Oh, she's dead. Tis like she comes to speak of Cassio's death. If she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife. What wife? I have no wife! I do beseech you that I may speak with you. Oh, could my lord! I had forgot thee. Oh, come in, Emilia. Soft, by and by. Let me the curtains draw. Where art thou? What's the matter with thee now? Oh, good my lord, yonder foul murder's done. Cassio, my lord, hath killed a young Venetian called Rodrigo. Rodrigo killed. Cassio killed! No, Cassio was not killed. Not? Cassio killed? Then murder's out of tune and sweet revenge grows harsh. Oh, falsely, falsely murdered. Alas, what cry is that? That what? Uh, oh, out and alas, that was my lady's voice. Help, help, oh, help. Oh, lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona, oh, sweet mistress, speak. Uh, my guiltless death I die. Oh, who hath done this deed? Nobody. I myself. Farewell, uh, commend me to my kind lord. Farewell. She's 
like a liar gone to burning hell. T'was I that killed her! Oh, the more angels she and you, the blacker devil. She turned to folly, and she was a whore! Thou art rash as fire to say that she was false. Oh, she was heavenly true. Cassio did top her! That's my husband else! But that I did proceed upon just grounds to this extremity. Thy husband knew it all. My husband? I. Was he that told me first? An honest man he is, and, and hates the slime that sticks on filthy deeds. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. He lies to the heart, O oh, gull, O oh, dolt, as ignorant as dirt. Thou hast done a deed, I care not for thy sword. I'll make thee known, the more hath killed my mistress. Murder, murder! Oh, are you come, Iago? You have done well that men must lay their murders on your neck. Disprove this villain, if thou beest a man. He says thou toldst him that his wife was false. I know thou didst not, thou art not such a villain. Speak, for my heart is full. I told him what I thought, and told him no more than what he found himself was apt and true. You told a lie, an odious damned lie, upon my soul a lie, a wicked lie. She false with Cassio. Did you say with Cassio? Oh, villainy. What are you mad? I charge you, get you home. Let me have leave to speak. Tis proper I obey him, but not now. For thou hast killed the sweetest innocent that e'er did lift up I. Oh, she was foul. There lies your mistress, whose breath indeed these hands have newly stopped. I know this act shows horrible and grim. Tis pitiful. But yet, Iago knows that she with Cassio hath the act of shame a thousand times committed. Cassio confessed it, and she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand. It was a handkerchief. An antique token my father gave my mother. O oh, thou dull more, that handkerchief thou speakest of, I found my fortune and did give my husband. For often with a solemn earnestness, more than indeed belonged to such a trifle, he hath begged of me to steal it. Villainous whore! She give it Cassio, no. Alas, I found it and I did give it my husband. Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? Precious villain! Oh! I... I... Oh, lay me down by my mistress' side. More. She was chaste. She loved thee. Cruel more. So came my soul to bliss. As I speak true. So speaking as I think. I die. I die. Behold. I have a weapon. Here is my journey's end. Here is my butt, O oh, ill-starred wench. This look of thine will hurl my soul from heaven, and fiends will snatch at it. Cold. Cold, my girl. Even like thy chastity. 
Oh, cursed a slave. With me, ye devils! Is the Mona dead? <gasps> oh, if that thou best a devil, I cannot kill thee. Oh! <sighs> I plead, sir, but not killed. I am not sorry, neither. I would have thee live, for in my sense tis happiness to die! My lord, thou wert once so good, fallen in the practice of a damned slave. What shall be said to thee? Why? Anything. An honorable murderer, if you will. For not I did in hate but all in honor. This wretch hath confessed his villainy. Did you and he consent in my death? I. Dear General, I never gave you cause. I do believe it, and I ask your pardon. With you, I pray. Demand that demi-devil why he has thus ensnared my soul and in body! <laughs> Demand me nothing. What you know, you know. From this time forth, I never will speak word. Sir, you shall understand what hath befallen, which, as I think you know not, here is a letter found in the pocket of the slain Rodrigo, and here another, the one of them imports my death to be undertook by Rodrigo. Oh. The pernicious caitiff. How came you, Cassio, by that handkerchief that was my wife's? I found it in my chamber, and he himself confessed even now, but there he dropped it for a special purpose which brought to his desire. When you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am, nothing extenuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved, not wisely, but too well, of one not easily <laughs> jealous, but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme of one whose hand threw a pearl away. And say besides, that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turban Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. Ah! <laughs> uh, I kissed thee ere I killed thee. No way but this. Killing myself! And I did die! Upon your kiss! This did I fear, but thought he had no weapon. For he was great of heart. Oh, Spartan dog, more fell than anguish, hunger of the sea. This is thy work, the object poison sight. Time, the place, the torture. Oh, enforce it! Myself will straight abroad into the 
state this heavy act. With heavy heart relate. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this play and for supporting us. Even though we do not see you, we feel you and we hope that you felt us too. There is another performance tomorrow if you want to watch it again. And we thank you so very much. <laughs>